that native plants that grow naturally in your area can be a great choice for your garden because not only are they well adapted to local conditions, but they can also create great habitat for your local wildlife. Now, many native plants are flowering in spring, so it's a great time to get out and about and see which indigenous species might look good in your garden. I'm at the Karingai Wildflower Garden at St Ives on Sydney's North Shore. Normally I'd have to walk for a couple of hours to see this many plants in flower, but they've conveniently gathered them together to give us a snapshot of the over 500 species that grow in the garden here. There are some real icons of the Australian bush, things like banksias, grevilleas, the heath flowers, baronia, and of course the pea flowers. And when you see the diversity of shapes, sizes and colours, you can see why I get excited about growing Australian plants in my garden. This garden has 123 hectares of wonderful Australian native plants. Many of them are indigenous to Sydney and the surrounding areas, but wherever you are in Australia, there are local native gardens and reserves that can give you inspiration on the indigenous species of your area. There are many spectacular Grevillea hybrids, like this Perinda Royal Mantle that's spilling beautifully over the embankment here. They make great garden plants, but I've got a real soft spot for some of the wild Grevillea species, like this one, Grevillea calii. It only grows along the ridge top next to Monavale Road and it's become rare and endangered because its habitat is slowly disappearing. I grow this one in my garden for its lovely ferny foliage, beautiful pink new growth and lovely toothbrush flowers that attract the birds. Just because you're growing wild species doesn't mean you have to let them go feral in the garden. Most native shrubs will benefit greatly from a bit of shaping from a young age. And this Grevillea bower eye is no exception. You'll notice that it flowers on the ends of the branches. So the more branches we have, the better the flowering display. Now this one's just coming to an end with its flowering period, so it's a great time to prune. You could laboriously go through a finger and thumb and pinch out the tips like this, but what I find more efficient is to grab a handful of shoots, one cut, and the chop's done. The Gaimea lily is one of the truly iconic indigenous species of the Sydney bushland. It grows wild on my block, but it makes a fabulous garden plant. Give it plenty of space and light and feed it really well to encourage lots of the strappy leaves and eventually you'll get to the four metre high flower stems which are a magnet for bird life. And just over there is a rare relative of this plant. It's the giant spear lily, Dorianthes palmeri, which has totally different flower stems that spill over and are absolutely spectacular. This is a rare plant that only grows in northern New South Wales but it makes a wonderful garden plant throughout the East Coast. And I think it's really important that we grow these rare species to ensure their survival. There are over a hundred genera of Australian orchids, but this has to be one of the most spectacular. Its common name is the rock lily, even though it's an orchid. Botanically, it's Dendrobium speciosum and in spring it lights up the bush with these long-lasting sprays of creamy yellow flowers. So for ideas about how to bring a bit of local flavour to your garden, why not get out and explore the plants that are native to your area? It's also a great way to spend a sunny spring day.